morning, I want to introduce you to a family, a family behind the politics of our nation's immigration system, an American family that was separated for 14 years and 99 days. The De La Rosas arrived in, and lived in Tucson, Arizona. Arsenio, a U.S. citizen, his wife Gloria, and their four U.S.-born children. Now, Gloria, a Mexican citizen, was in the U.S. with a visa sponsored by her husband. When that visa expired, lawyers advised her to return to Mexico and apply for legal status from there. Well, she did that. When she showed up at the consulate in Ciudad Juarez, officials told her she crossed illegally and banned her from entering the U.S. for 10 years. After 14 years of battles, 14 years of tears, 14 years of so many missed moments, the De La Rosas this past weekend were finally made whole. I spoke with Gloria and her son Bill from their home in Tucson after they were reunited and asked them what that day was like. Take a look. What were you thinking? What were you feeling, Gloria? Pues, estaba llena de temor todavía decía I was very fearful. I was saying, is it possible that I'm in the United States, on American soil? Is it possible? Could it be possible? I was looking all around me, and I was still doubtful. I was surprised, but it was real. It was very real. Gloria, in these 14 years of family separation, every year, every minute, a difficult one. What were some of the toughest moments? Los momentos más difíciles fue fueron cuando the most difficult moments were when they notified me that I was going to have to stay for ten years. Back then, I was saying, 10 years. How am I going to survive? Ten years without my children. How? The baby, who was the youngest one, was four years old. My daughter, the only girl because I have four boys and a girl, I was saying, my daughter is only nine years old. They're going to be in the most difficult part of their youth, when they don't know what they want. All of that was swirling in my head. I had to be strong. I had to be strong for them because I'm their reflection. And the hardest part was also mourning my husband. When he died, my children were young. They were growing up, preparing for their future. That was also a very difficult step. What was Saturday like and, and what's it like just having her by your side, knowing that that's not changing. I would say it is, it is very emotional and it's very uh, surreal, to be honest. I'm sitting here next to her and I just, I'm looking at her and I just can't believe that she's by my side now. And, you know, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday marked the, you know, 14 years and 99 days um, uh, that we were apart and I just felt like I had to pinch myself um, the entire day because, you know, for those, for every one of those days, I've been dreaming of that day. And I felt like I was about to wake up from one of those dreams. Uh, but, you know, after we were reunited, um, and the first thing we did was visit my my father um, at his grave in, in Nogales, Arizona. And it was just so special being there with him and letting him know that, you know, mission accomplished. Uh, we're finally together and, and that he can rest in peace now. When your dad passes in 2018 and, and your mom not able to live with you all, how, how does one young person take command and control of their lives without your mother and, and your father there? It was extremely difficult, Jose, and I'm... Um, you know, my mom was my inspiration. My mom was my hope. It wasn't just me. You know, my siblings, every one of them stepped up to the plate from my oldest brother, Jim, who joined the United States Marines, to my little sister, Naomi, who took up the mantle when I went off to college, my little brother, Bobby, um, who was only four when my mom left, and now he's 18. You know, every one of us played our um, uh, an instrumental role in, in keeping this family together, even while being separated across across a wall. And I realized that 
what had happened to my family, what I thought was exceptional, really wasn't. That it was actually common, commonplace and a reflection of what was happening across the country. And my mom, back in 2009, she used the legal process. She hired an, an attorney. She paid the necessary fees. And she went through the legal process. And that ended up, that culminated, culminated in her getting separated from us for a decade. That's, that's the legal system that we have at the moment. And it's why we need changes, because there are millions of families who yearn, who desire, who pray every single night that they could fix their status so they could have some security and some safety. But they cannot because we, we don't have reform. Gloria, I hope, I trust, and I firmly believe that you have been making some good Sonora food for your family since Saturday. Sí, así es. Yes, they were missing it. My son told me, Mom, now I'm going to bring my lunch to work every day. And I told him, yes, my son, of course, and my other children too. My son who's here and my youngest son. My daughter told me, Mom, now we're going to eat healthy food made at home. I told her, yes, of course we are. Bill de la Rosa, Gloria Arellano de la Rosa, thank you so very much for being with us today. Gracias, José. Muchas gracias. I look forward to sharing a meal of Gloria's cooking soon at their home. The, Bill was telling us that the La Rosa story is not unique in our country. There are more than 11 million U.S. citizens living in mixed immigration status households as we speak with the same fears, the same dreams, and the same uncertainty.